Hey guys, it's Steve back with another tutorial. This one's going to be on the Logix PBR Painter Pro. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to show you guys this workflow that I've figured out for PBR so you can create any brush you want, period. Paint any texture you want, period, and make it look good. So this brush I created through the draw workspace but I have the paint open and I have the image open in Philogix and then all I did was I pulled up this texture and I'll show you how to do this in just a second and I am now painting a brush that is effectively not inside Philogix and it is being painted with height information this is and you can do whatever you want with it. This is a displacement map that I've imported effectively. And so I've been doing this for a little while and just trying to get this worked out for everybody so it goes on nice and smooth. And what you're going to need to do, and I'll show you in just a minute, is open up Philogix, get something like a cylinder out, get it ready to be painted. And if you're following along in any other tutorial and you've got a model that you want to work with, come on over and let's jump right in. Now, in my previous tutorial, I showed you guys where to find this tutorial to do this. And I think we all need our skills honed. So even I take tutorials, right? Because I want to learn everything in Blender. I want to learn everything to kind of get rid of Substance Painter and all those other things. And I've been using the Philogix PBR Painter Pro for a while now. And what I'm doing is I'm coming in here and I'm going to add a bunch of detail to this. And I'm not going to do the whole tutorial this, you know, like I'm not going to bore you guys with it. I'm going to get straight to the point. But what I'm doing is I'm pulling in any image I want and painting it with Philogix PBR Painter Pro. And then I've got the other brushes and the other settings and I can bake these maps and scale it and have access to smart materials and do a ton of other things and create a bunch of layers and opacities and do uh, you know have a pretty solid workflow that where Philogix B Repair Pro is actually going to be incorporated in about 75% of my workflows now for texturing and whereas you know I don't want to go anywhere else sometimes I create my own shaders but for the most part it's going to be Philogix and it's an add-on fits right inside Blender. So very basic, like I got these cracks here. You know, I just drop my um, height anchor layer here, then play with the opacity, kind of make that look good because I don't want to overkill it. Um, and that looks pretty good, but let's get started. So I've got this piece here, and if I isolate that, you can see what it is. Just a little solidified piece, and I believe that, yeah, the solidify is applied. So what we want to do is you take any piece you want. Like I said, just grab a cylinder, and just go ahead and go into edit mode, select everything, hit UV Smart Project. I put in for this one, and you might play with these settings a little bit so you get a good placement, uh, 0 0.07, and then my area weight, 0 0.02, and just hit OK. And then once you've got that, you know, come in here, hit all for this UV, and then very simple, just go ahead and pack those islands, OK? And once you've got that done, you can jump back over and meet me in the 3D viewport. Now, for previous tutorials on Philogix, like how to go through the interface and how it works with the UI, go through my folder. I've got a playlist. Okay, so I'm just going to add a custom layer. I'm going to come straight down here to the paint. I'm going to drop in paint. And now I want to come down here and type in new. And I've got a 4K set up here with the alpha at zero and hit OK. Now from here, you can jump over to the paint panel. And if you don't have 3.1, the new one, you got to go get it because you're not going to have a good result. You're not going to be able to follow along. Um, I was using 2.3 for a long time, but he came out 3.1 in the brush manager, which now is working with my workflow trick. Got a little hack for it. So I come in here and I want to start like painting leakage on and click paint and then come over here. I want to kind of match it up with, you know, kind of a darker gray, maybe a little bit darker than what I've got. Bring the brush size down. Mind the strength doesn't have to be all the way up and you can kind of start painting in some leakage. 
It could be a little bit stronger than that. Not too much. Maybe a little darker. There we go. And I want to be able to see it. And so, and I kind of moved the, the brush up. And the fun thing about if you're doing hard surface or anything else, all these are different pieces. So I'm not overlapping my paint on anything. But I have an ID map tutorial, which will work for any version of the logics. So you go in there and check that out. And then you can just paint the one, you bake the one ID and then paint the one ID. And so I'm just going to paint this one side a little bit. All right. And I like that maybe some hydraulic leakage or something. So I can come back over under the same layer and I'm gonna grab the grain and kind of zoom in a little bit here. Now man manage your, your, your brush size and your zoom, okay? That's gonna be very important that you don't kind of like get that messed up. Now I wanna bring the strength all the way up for this one because what's gonna happen here when I add the height information is you see a nice little breakup right here and let's darken that up even a little bit more there we go that's pretty good and so i'm just going to paint a little bit of that to kind of break it up and the workflow is as follows you know you're blending all of these things in now for the fun part i mean i'm just going to get straight to it you come up here to your draw workspace and you've got a brush here, whatever it is, it's blank probably, just a standard draw brush. Go ahead to the little add a brush here, click that. And now what you can do is rename this one to something like new brush, just so you know what it is, hit enter. And you wanna come on down, scroll down, and I've got some stuff in here. I'm just gonna click off of that, I'll click new. And then I wanna click the texture properties, okay? And then if you've downloaded any textures doesn't matter go find one at polyhaven pause the video get the 4k or 8k i would prefer you get the 8k textures just so it looks really good go in and find it i've got diamond plates i've got a displacement map i'll load in the displacement map i'm gonna come back up here and i could set from view plane to random tiled 3d or stencil if you have the stencil you can bring that over and you can paint the stencil on but the one that's been working the best for me actually is uh, viewplane surprisingly and so i can just come in here now and start painting this and if i don't like the the black behind it the darkness there you can kind of bring the slider up and like I said, mind your brush size as you're going through here. It's going to take a little bit of artistic skill to kind of get that right. Or you can bring the brush size up to something really big if you wanted to. And kind of just plate that out and blend it in. Now, keep in mind, you do not have to paint the displacement. You can paint the texture. And I'll actually switch back over to the stencil. And like I said, you can lighten that up. And so I can just come in here and kind of paint this and make it look nice and kind of just color everything in. And if you don't know how to use, uh, move the stencil around, like I said, the settings for that are in the brush workspace. And you just scroll down, pull down stencil that like you have it here. And then you've got these different things. You can try those out. And then you can right click on it and then move it over and you can kind of reline it back up now if you wanted to resize it i'm not going to do that just yet i'm actually going to kind of play around with this if you want to resize it shift hold it and the right mouse and it'll scale it inside or up and down and then control right mouse will rotate this around for you a little bit and it there is like a little bit of a line here, but that's just because of how I did that of it. Um, I'll switch over to tiled and I'm just going to kind of drag the mouse across this. And that way there's no line or seam. So like I said, you just got to play with this and see how you want to do it. Very simple, very easy. And then I'm just going to come over and I can add a metallic work, uh, <laughs> metallic work, I can add metallic channel. And I can play with the float here to increase or decrease the metallic. I can go ahead and add a roughness channel and then come down to the float and play with the roughness, right? And then I can come to the height and 
I have to make sure that the base actually was anchored for that custom layer. So let me anchor that. And then I'm going to go back over to the height, drop an anchor so I can pull that in because I anchored that layer and boom, whatever, you know, you can get in here and now you're painting height. Now, another important thing to note that you have this little asterisk right here next to paint. It's just like the same asterisk over in the UV workspace where the image is not saved yet. So just click on the little lines here for the image and you can click save as you can pick some type of folder, you know, create a new one. Just call that new double click on it and you can save all of that. And now you, the asterisk went away here and it also went away here. So you saved that image. Now, if you click on the little cog wheel, uh, you could save this brush inside of Blender, uh, excuse me, inside of Philogix. Okay, right? So go ahead and click save. And now that brush is going to be saved. So if you come over here, and I know it says gain and doesn't have an image, but if you click on that brush and click paint, uh, well, now you're painting that again. And that's not just because it's up, but we saved it and chose it. So like if I came over here and wanted to paint my uh, cracks in, well, that's what's painting, not the other stuff, right? The active brush is what's here. If I switch back over, then you can see I'm actually painting that again. And that is wonderful, beautiful 4K. And you've got your metallic, your roughness, your height. Uh, I don't have the normal on there yet, but I guess I could just go ahead and add the normal for the fun of it. And then there you go. And that's a non-color. So then you've got your normal map and everything else. And you're painting PBR textures, right? And that looks tremendous. I love it. There you go. So make sure to save that. And then, of course, you can save your brushes. And before you are done, you can go ahead and click Finish. And then, actually, while you're still in the Paint menu, you can click Pack. I already packed mine. And then you click finish. Make sure to click finish and pack it. And it's going to save all this wonderful information to your blend file. And then the brush. And I didn't do any of the painting back here. It looks ugly. But just kind of painting everywhere for the examples. And what's going to happen is Philogix will remember that brush. And if you want to paint that later, it's going to be there. And I'll come back with another tutorial on the method for getting the icon to show up. Because that's kind of uh, eluding me at the moment. But... I'll come back and do a little short tutorial on that. And if I want, I can go ahead and come back up here, add a new brush. I'll call this one new two, hit enter, come down here. I'll add another texture and now come back and I will open something else. And if I want to pull up my brushes and I can grab the second one, which is a diamond plate with some color on it. And I could paint this one as well. And that's just the JPEG, but, and it's not even full strength. Let me bring the strength up and let's make this something manageable. And it's nice, right? So now I'm painting this as height information here, and it's seamless and it's got height. And so you can really, really do a lot. And it's going to look good. So I really appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions, uh, HMU in the comments, you know. And if you've got some really cool project you want to post it on my Instagram at Phoenix After Ashes, I'll have a link in the description for socials. And on your way down, hit that subscribe and hit that like button. And as always, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. You guys are awesome and you motivate me to want to do more channel updates and keep you guys posted on the new stuff that's coming out. Thanks. See you in the next one.